Hi, and welcome back to the Power BI Custom Visuals course. In this module, we're going to be looking at the linear gauge. Now, the linear gauge was developed by MAQ Software, and it's a nice gauge to be able to allow you to compare actual to goal values that you may have in a uh, horizontal looking gauge, kind of like a bar chart looking gauge. It automatically also calculates variances between your actual and your goal values that you may have. That's what you see here that shows the 45% on the gauge on my screenshot here. The other nice thing about the linear gauge is it also does permit and allow you to show multiple trend lines. You can have up to two trend lines, and in the example shown on my screen right now, you're seeing a month over month that has a 6% down, whereas there's still 3.2% up year over year. So it's a nice type of gauge. I do enjoy it. There are a few things I'd like to see done a little bit better with it, but we'll talk about that as we go looking into this one in more detail. So what we're going to do first is we're going to go walk you through how to go download this linear gauge, where to then import it into Power BI Desktop, and then we'll walk you through an example of how to use it. All right, so our first step is to come to the Power BI Custom Visuals Gallery. You can go to there by going to the visuals.powerbi.com, and that'll redirect you to the site that I'm looking at here on my screen now. Now, to find the linear gauge, you're going to scroll down a little bit here, and you're going to find the linear gauge uh, about halfway down. You'll see it right here. This is the linear gauge. You can go ahead and select that, and then choose to download the visual. Now you can also download a sample, which is really useful to see some completed examples of how you can use the linear gauge. I do recommend that you download those samples and take a look. So go ahead though and uh, make sure that you download the visual for this example. And then you're gonna go back over to the Power BI desktop to continue this example. So I'm gonna go launch open my Power BI desktop right here. And our first step is though, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go import some data. And so the data that we're using for this example is sales data. And we're gonna be looking at sales data by different regions. So to uh, pull in that data, you're going to go up to the Get Data section here and select Excel. Now, once you select Excel, you're then going to go look under the Data section here, and you may have already downloaded this Excel file or Excel workbook from a link below in the video. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and select the Region Gauge Excel workbook and then hit Open. Once you hit Open on that, it will bring into the Navigator pane the Sales Metrics spreadsheet. So we'll select the Sales Metrics and then hit Load to bring this into our Power BI desktop. All right, so we now see the data that's inside of that spreadsheet showing up in our field list. And what I recommend, at least for this example, is to go ahead and bring it in as a table first, so that way you can see and get a good idea of the type of data that we're going to be working with, and I can talk you through what it looks like as well. So I've brought it in here as a table. I put it in here in a particular order just for me being able to talk to you about it. Let me make it a little bit larger so you can actually see what we're looking at here. We have uh, four fields, not a whole lot of rows in this data set, but what's in here is you can see each of the regions that we have, the amount of profit that they're bringing in, and what their goal for profit is. Some of them are exceeding their goal and some of them aren't. And then you'll also see two different columns here that say min start, max end. What those have to do is the starting point of the gauge. So these fields, what we're gonna use, is we're gonna populate the starting point of the gauge. So rather than starting at zero, we're gonna start this at 700,000, okay? So we'd rather start it at a different point rather than starting it at zero, we can choose the starting point of the gauge by using a data set. You'll also see these last two columns have to do with our trend line. We have an over last month and an over last year showing us how much we've either improved or maybe gone down from the previous year. So in this case, we're down $1,250 and we're oh, down $8,500 for the whole year. So we have the data, this is what it looks like for our data set. Now let's actually bring in the linear gauge and show you how to use it. All right, so I'm gonna bring in and import the linear gauge by going over here to the visualization section and select import from file. We'll then choose to import a custom visual and we'll hit import here. And then you're gonna go navigate to wherever you downloaded the custom visual that we looked at earlier. Now I've already downloaded mine and you can see it here, the linear gauge, I'll select that and hit okay. All right, so the linear gauge has now been imported. I can select that to put it on my design surface right here. And then we'll wanna to start to apply some data to it. Now, I already kinda of told you what all the fields do and how they would align in here, but let's actually talk through it one more time as we actually have the gauge in here now. So in this case, the value, which you can see in the field well, the value is our actual value that we're trying to measure, which in this case is profit. So I'll check off profit. And you can see that immediately adds it to the gauge. Our target value is the goal that we're trying to reach, okay? So if you check off the goal here, that'll add it into the next available spot in the field well. So if I check off goal, that'll place it into the target value. And you'll see it appears on the gauge as this very thin, but a uh, black bar that's going through the middle of the gauge, okay? So that black bar indicates that that's the goal, uh, which was about 3 million, yeah, 3 million, 800,050. That's our goal, but we exceeded our goal with about 4 million and some change. You also have the ability to adjust the minimum and maximum value. The minimum value being the starting point, which right now is set to zero, and the maximum value being the ending point of the gauge. So in this case, what we're gonna do is we're gonna select the minimum value to be our minimum start or our min start value. 
and we'll bring in the max end as the maximum value here. Okay, so you can see it's adjusted the gauge. Here's our bottom part of the gauge. Here's our top part of the gauge that we've adjusted based on the data we have in our data set. You can also bring in multiple trends. We've talked about that a couple times now. We have trend value one, trend value two. We can bring in the over last month and the over last year as our multiple trend values that we show on this chart, okay? All right, now a couple things that we can do here, we can do some formatting. If we wanna format the numbers a little bit differently, we can do that by selecting the gauge and then going into the format paintbrush. And then from here, we can go underneath things like where it says the date, data, val, data label, excuse me. We can change the data labels here if we wanted to, to instead of doing automatic display units, we can actually change it to none. So it'll add the comma separators back in here that was in our data set originally. And we can also go to the trend labels. You can see the trend labels over here. If we wanted to, we can turn off the, or may, maybe set it to none again. So you can see the comma separators added back into our values there. All right, so there's a couple things you may wanna do. Now, one of the things that I find is a little bit of a deficiency right now with the linear gauge is that I would really like to see another field added in here for multiples. And basically the idea of multiples in my idea would be that I can drag in something like the region and it would automatically create a linear gauge for each region that I have. Unfortunately, that doesn't exist yet. There's nothing like that in here yet. So if you wanted to do something like that, what you would have to do is essentially copy and paste this gauge multiple times. So I can copy it, paste it, paste it again, and paste it again. Now I have four separate gauges that I've now created, and I can filter each one of these gauges to the data set or the region that I want to be able to visualize. So right now they're all exactly the same, but what I could do is I can go underneath my first one, drag in the region underneath the filter section here, and I can add a filter on region and call this my Midwest region. And I can do the same thing for the next one. Select the next gauge, drag in region, and I can make this one my Northeast gauge. Select the next one, drag in region, and then make this my Northwest gauge. Select the last one, drag in region. And so you kind of get the idea of why having multiples option will be nice here. Some visuals do have the ability to do multiples. This is just isn't one of them. But now I have a gauge for each one of my regions, and if I wanted to, I can custom format each one of these for, for the particular region. So this is my Midwest one. That's the filter I selected for the first one. I could select Midwest, then go over to the format paintbrush, and I can do things like make each one of these a different color. So I can make this first one by going underneath general. I can change the main color here, and I can make it something like red. You'll see there's a comparison value in here, or a comparison color. If you change the comparison color, that's basically this gray area that you see right here. You can change that to something else if you wanted to, and here, you, here I've changed it to blue, and you can kind of see, get an idea of what that looks like. I'm gonna undo that, I kind of liked it with the gray there. So I'll select that and leave it as red with a gray comparison value. You can also add a title in here if you wanted to, which really makes sense when you start to bring in multiple linear data like I've done here. So I could select something like uh, turn on the title, go underneath the title section, and I can call this one my Midwest gauge, or just call it Midwest. Maybe I bump up the text size a little bit, and make a 16 font is fine, and then I can change the color maybe to match what we have inside the gauge itself. All right, so we're, we're pulling it together here. It's starting to come together kind of nice. I like that. Let's also do this for our next gauge. So for our next gauge, we'll select this one. We're gonna go and add a different color for this one. So maybe we make this one purple this time. We'll go underneath the title, we'll turn a title on, and we'll give it a title of Northeast in this case. So we'll call this one Northeast. We'll bump up the text size here. So I'll bump that up to 16, center that. Or I'm sorry, we're not centering it, but change the color. We'll change the color to purple there as well. And so I would do the same thing on each of these. So I would go down to the next one. This one is actually gonna be, let's make this one something like blue. Then I can come down here and turn on the title again. We're just kind of doing the same thing a couple times here. So I'm doing a little bit faster this time. And I'll make this one called Northwest. We'll up the text size on it. One more, there we go. And we'll match the color to what we had earlier. So we'll do it, you know what, tell you what, I'll leave this last one the same color. But what I'll do is I'll turn in the title and I'll make it 16 font once more. And we'll call this one my Southeast. All right, great. So we'll change the color on this one as well. There we go. So we've got these four gauges in here now. They look pretty nice. What we could do in addition to this, this is we could add other ways of being able to filter the data. It would also filter the gauges down. So if we wanted to, we could do something like add in the region and we could add this in as a slicer and then we could select the regions that we wanted to select. You'll notice that it grays out the ones that don't apply. So you could even multi-select here if you wanted to, to be able to see certain gauges, okay? So there's nice ways that you can interact with this. I'm gonna go ahead and delete this slicer, but I did wanna show you that the cross filtering between a slicer and the gauge still apply. You can still interact with them as you see here. All right, so that's it for this example. I hope you guys enjoyed this custom visual, the linear gauge, and I look forward to showing you our next one.